Welcome to ES Ascension News for December 2021. Our theme for this month, Cathedral Activation Begins. Dear Ascending Family, In the fog of global spiritual warfare, nothing can be accepted at face value. All is shifting on the inner, in-between, and outer planes, as the planet is in a state of grand flux in her ascension evolution. Through the transcendent moments of the triune unifier, fire-water transmissions that were designed to surface our deepest spiritual wounds during the Ophicus cycle, these potent personal activations led up to a major crescendo of grid wars, and defense of Christos, Trinity, Architecture, and Gateways. December was met with the major unpacking of negative alien agenda, artificial machinery, running black magic grids, reversal currents, and Metatronic Base 5 programming through the ley lines as Dark Mother. These changes generated a series of explosions in the outer fields as the result of a series of cathedral activations, which led to a grand activation at the Lincoln Cathedral in the United Kingdom during the winter solstice. Thus, our grid working adventures and personal experiences with the Amethyst Dragon Kings from the raw God world creation, continue to reveal the deeper mysteries about humanity's true origins. Since the activation of the Albion Cosmic Magenta Rod, Magenta Grail Cup, and Scepter Codes in the 11th dimensional New Grange, Ireland Gateway, the mysteries upon mysteries are unfolding. The ongoing revelation of the Christos Sophia spiritual identity, the resurrection of the solar female Christ in her triple solar goddess emanation are heralding the age of golden Aeonesis, which ushers in the organic timeline of planetary ascension. The Amethyst Order Dragon Kings are finally reunited with their counterparts as the Emerald Order Keepers of the Flame within the planetary body, which express the gender principle balance of our Cosmic Holy Father and Cosmic Holy Mother in the Matter Realm. For deeper inspiration, the Christos Master Painter, Akian, has brought forth the depiction of the return of the Amethyst Order Dragon Kings and their reunification with angelic humanity on the earth through her recently completed masterworks, a painting aptly named Triumph. Together, their reunification in matter signifies the embodiment of the sacred universal rod and staff, to ensure angelic humanity's return to the uniquely aligned destination that is based upon our original spiritual family's solar sun star genetic factors. Through their return to this material world, they slowly reveal the mysteries of creation to the sincere spiritual seeker that loves truth, confirming the momentous position that our planetary collective consciousness has in fulfilling the divine plan of universal ascension within the cosmic order. Beloveds, we return back into the arms of our cosmic parents in the God worlds as the crystal rose hearts of the star born, the eternal stars that we are. Our planetary consciousness and those that have chosen the organic ascension timeline are enduring great spiritual transformation through the exposure to the volatility of the immense polarization of the world of forces swirling in the outer chaotic environment. 
Additionally, the momentous planetary initiation and personal transmogrification is occurring now. Through the return of the Mother Sophia, through her emanation as the divine solar feminine Christos Sophia, within the cathedral activation and ether ritual that has taken place in Roslyn Chapel, Chartres Cathedral, and Lincoln Cathedral. She has risen as she transmits her divine fire water through sacred sound plasmas of the trine unifiers from the Ophicus constellation. She ignites the fifth element in the ritual of ether to bestow her blessings through the Azothian sapphire Crystalla Sophia crown. Love your Holy Mother Sophia with all of your crystal rose heart, and from within the inner sanctum of your heart, the kingdom of God will reveal, and Christo Sophia's holiest of holies in the eternal animating spirit will become known to you. Knowing Our True Divine Holy Mother as a result, spiritual initiates around the globe are being pushed incredibly hard to surrender and let go of their previous station of identity aspects that are controlled by the fear and trauma recorded in the negative ego layers. Through the lens of the final conflict of global spiritual warfare, each of us must find our way to shed the dead skin along with all of the obsolete patterns, habits, beliefs, and reinforcements that were connected to the third-dimensional controlled narrative. There is no going back to what was in order to escape the truth. For those unaware that the outer events are reflections of personal spiritual lessons this is the time of the dark night of the soul in which our heart must cry deeply out for help and forge a direct connection with God. We must know that God is a loving force that exists within us. Nothing outside can save us from the painful truth found in perpetuating self-deceptions. Instead, we must turn within to look at the inner contents and pray with great fervor to cross the Luciferian abyss so we can leap into the unlimited and abiding love of our Divine Holy Mother's arms. Through the return of our authentic Divine Holy Lady, she restores and resurrects our consciousness body through the purge of her initiator into the sacred mysteries of solar fire water, through the immersion into the divine ether elements, she purges and purifies our physical form, our blood, and our soul. Every fiber of our being is saturated in her divine spiritual waters, cleansing and purifying elementals and distortions recorded in our cellular material. If we have not been made strong from ongoing egoic purification in order to receive her most powerful initiator of solar fire water transmission, during the ritual of ether, it is possible that this highest initiation can transit us to the other side in order to find rest and strengthen within the crystal cathedral. This sacred anointing of divine fire water has begun in mass, and this initiation happens while in a physical body or when disembodied, our position in time is of no matter 
when one has been chosen to receive this powerful initiator from the Holy Divine Mother Sophia. We surrender to our Holy Mother and allow what will be in the earth or as it is in heaven as we place our spiritual destiny in her hands as to receive all means we must give all. Thus the immense power and potential of the Ophicus alchemical laws of wound healing. Our wounds arise from the inner unhealed shadows and we each endure some function of the phantom death, that which must die so we can be reborn anew. We will never be the same as we are forever changed. She asks us to step out from the holy sepulcher mixing chamber of the volatile forces of nature and into wearing the holy robes of God. But we must surrender all imposters and demons, remembering the unconditional love of our Holy Mother Sophia with all of our crystal heart as she has returned for us now. Indeed, this is the time of great consciousness rebirth, and those spiritual initiates that have chosen the path of spiritual ascension are being crafted and molded through the application of tremendous weight and pressure that ultimately crystallizes the perfect intentions of the sparkling eternal diamond of the beauty upon beauties, the Christos Sophia within. I am that I am. Celtic Druid Grail Bloodlines and Mother of Dragons From approximately 22,000 years ago until the more recent histories of non-human entity invasion, to subvert and take over the Christos angelic human DNA. The Celtic Druid Grail bloodlines organized and went underground to hide and protect the genetic records and Gnostic wisdom of the original Magi Grail lines, as well as the ancient texts of the Solar Dragon Kings. These are the ancient builder races from the God Worlds, which recorded the mechanics of creation in the Emerald Founder Records, which held the highly coveted secrets of the Magi Grail Kings or Solar Dragon Kings and many of the assorted Diamond Sun lineages. These genetic bloodlines were alchemically conceived and genetically mastered to be the benevolent leaders and guardian Grail Kings to protect and preserve the earth in order for her to fulfill her emerald crystal heart position to activate the divine plan of universal ascension. There was an ascension timeline rebellion in which extra-dimensional non-human forces claimed ownership over all earth humans and planetary resources and began secretly infiltrating into all positions of power over the advanced human society. This began the genocidal agendas to eradicate the Celtic Grail King's DNA, whom had preserved the Blue Flame Keeper's Melchizedek Christos teachings from Atlantean and Hyperborean timelines upon 7th Dimensional Gaia. It is possible that many of these groups are the original Israelites that fled to Ireland and then migrated to northern Scotland Islands and Wales in order to survive. Then about 9,500 years ago, there was another major diaspora of Celtic Druid Grail lines that were being hunted down for extinction, including the red-haired giants from the Hyperborean lines of Gaia that came here through the seventh dimensional portal systems in the northern tip of Scotland, Greece, and Peru. 
These were descendants of the ancient tribes of Tuatha, who preserved the Celtic red-haired goddess lineages of the Mother of Dragons and the sacred rites of solar dragon queens from the god worlds, which held the mysteries of the triple solar goddess and her Edenic planetary consciousness. One of the Edenic planets is where many Christos starseeds and Celtic Magi Grail lines have come forth, as this was the embodiment of the Mother of Dragons in her Christos Mary Sophia triple solar goddess form, the sister to our planet known as Tiamat. The Celtic goddess lineages are from the authentic grail lines of the Mother of Dragons, and with the much-anticipated return of the Tuatha Celtic goddess, Mary Totten has opened a floodgate of Celtic grail kings, tribal fire letter DNA activations. Thus, many ascending females connected directly to this particular lineage in their ancestry are beginning to be systematically downloaded with these solar dragon queen Celtic triquetra coding. The identity of Mary Totten was hidden and obscured from view as her mother of dragon power source is located in Scotland and was not only coveted, but any trace of her embodiment is viciously despised by the hostile invading groups. Thus, there are several counterfeits in red cube projections throughout timelines that are using the same name signature. Any contact made with this identity from genetic bloodlines was being tracked and marked for death by those invaders having taken possession of the planetary cathedral architecture. Thus, the ongoing attempt to kill the female Christos lineages, such as the Cathars and the Essene lines from Gaul, which can give birth and bring forth the true Christos teachings and eternal life coding of the law of one. The war over timelines includes a war over authentic Christos Sophia herogamic identities, as all invading groups have generated their versions of the imposters for gaining strategic dominance in the Antichrist wars. Ta Dragon Tones are the galactic sunstar network of silver and gold firewater plasma coated frequencies, which are the bringer of the solar dragon Ouroboros ring lineages and the materializer of the dragon eggs, which include the Maji Grail King plasma rings that are reassembling and building around the Albion light body during this phase. The mother of dragons is correcting mitochondrial coding as per spiritual matrilineal lines, and this activation is being hosted by the White Order Elohai temples from the God worlds, which further run through the Elohim's white, gold, and blue lion vertical networks. These cosmic mother Sophia temples are currently transmitting assorted Sophianic coated divine ether vapors and pure gold icosahedron water codes into the underground aquifers throughout the planetary grid network. Some of these sentient and alive elementals are being transmitted in many gorgeous color waves from the rainbow dragon breath. The mother of dragons has several meanings, one of which is the royal descent of Maji Grail Kings 
is always genetically determined by the mitochondrial DNA of the solar dragon queens who are embodied in these Christosophia lineages which produce the authentic Maji Grail King lineage. When the negative alien agenda invaded and destroyed the authentic solar dragon queen lineages from incarnating upon the earth, they obliterated the solar female Christ architecture, which also radically damaged the mitochondrial DNA in the human race, making it nearly impossible to carry the Diamond Sun genetics. For more, please see Dark Mother and Black Madonna Network in the Ascension Glossary. Thus, the Christos mission is specifically involved in the reassembly and reclamation of these missing and hidden solar Christ female lineages, the embodied Christos Sophia lines, which are all linked to the 13th solar dragon queen, or cosmic mother embodiment of the solar female Christ Mary Sophia. Hallelujah in the celebration that our beloved Divine Holy Lady has returned. During this stage of Ophicus alchemy and winter solstice activation to reveal her sacred quintessence and triple solar goddess form through the reclamation of the cathedral ritual of divine ether, the anointing of the Holy Mother Sophia's Azothian Sapphire Cristala Crown. Progenitors of Nazarene Teachings and Disinformation Campaign The authentic Celtic Essene groups from Hyperborea were the progenitors of the original Nazarene Christos teachings, preserving the knowledge of the original Diamond Sun Templar locations, male and female Christos Sophia lines, historical and angelic human genetic records for Earth while she was under dark siege. The Nazarene style of Christianity was also known as the Celtic Church. The Celtic Church believed true kingship was an alchemical inheritance of the matriarchal solar dragon queen bloodline of Christos, which had nothing to do with ruling over anyone, as they considered humans as individual sovereigns on a unique path to God. For the Celtic Church, kingly and queenly inheritance was always recorded in the blood through the mitochondrial DNA of the mother's grail bloodline. In the Celtic world, the Pendragon's or head dragon was masculine and was carried from the bloodline of Fae, which holds deeper meaning that Pendragon as an earth guardian holds the fate of the timelines being recorded in the entire grail bloodline. It is important to be aware of the fact that the Antichrist forces have taken this use of the title Pendragon or Dragon and generated the satanic version for their inverted purposes of hijacking the original creator code, as well as hiding the spiritual knowledge that is sacred to all angelic humans. The cosmic Christ in our universal creation is from the source of the cosmic solar dragons that are from the God worlds and are free cosmic citizens. The dragon is not our enemy. It is the ancient founder genetic lineage from which all Diamond Sun humans were created in God's image. Dragon is not meant to be taken as the literal meaning of the word in a physical sense but is the esoteric knowledge of the energy signature of our divine human form and where we all have come from. Pendragon is the Fey Grail bloodline of King Arthur, 
that originates from the Christos diamond sun lines from Andromeda. Thus we call this the solar dragon breath of the Aqua Fae, the original Holy Father to Christos Sun Source Codes. This King Arthur was a living man that was assigned to be the guardian, protectorate, and pen dragon of the original Nazarene teachings being hidden by the original Celtic Church that went underground around 22,000 years ago. In previous articles, we have already established that there were a few previous timeline embodiments of Arthur the Aqua Fae that had incarnated in service to the Christos mission, and that King Arthur had finally returned into his embodiment to begin grid work for returning the triple solar goddess emanations, recovering the body parts for his genetic equal, Mary Guinevere Bridget, earlier this year. Thus, the solar dragon breath of Aqua Fae transmits the Holy Father's emerald ray prisms through the Father-Son codes to reunite the Christosophia and corrected solar masculine Christ coding throughout the universal time matrix. Many of the Essene sects carried this alchemical knowledge of the Christos bloodlines down through the ages, including the Cathars, Rosicrucians, Christos Templars, and Gnostics, who were later brutally persecuted as sorcerers and witches by the Catholic Church. The Church of Rome continued its propaganda throughout the bloodthirsty Crusades to perpetuate the lie that everyone outside of the authority of the Vatican were ignorant or barbaric savages, stealing the mother of dragon's knowledge and further anointing an approved secession of impostor black sun kings as being representatives from the royal blood of dragons. The name and signature of the Vatican is based upon the Etruscan civilization's goddess of the underworld, Vatica. The word Vaticanus means dragon in the Etruscan language. The Etruscans settled in a region of northern Italy known as Etruria before the rise of Rome and the Church of Rome was established. Thus, the fifth dimensional Stargate area of the Vatican was claimed by the Black Suns during the process of infiltration and invasion as previously this was an important area of mother of dragons and goddess worship of the Celtic Church. Thus, many of us will live to witness the destruction of the power behind the Vatican as the great imposter of the mother's holiest of holies and know the fall of Rome during this disclosure phase. The Vatican is built upon centuries of goddess worship, which has historically acted as the proxy for the black sun and invading groups for hiding their mass crimes against humanity, such as global human trafficking and child sacrifice. Thus, ancient Celtic civilizations practicing the Law of One were forced to abandon their cities and flee the main Stargate demographic areas they were protecting through grid-keeping the ley lines that were located in North Africa, Middle East, Greece, China, and Siberia. The common historical knowledge of the existence of the ancient Celtic Druid civilizations throughout these demographic areas of very tall humans with mostly auburn, strawberry blonde, and red hair has been mostly obliterated from public awareness. As an example, many Egyptian pharaohs and well-preserved mummies found in Peru, Iran, China, and Siberia 
are also red-haired and Celtic in their genetic origin. Some of the skeletons of the giants found in these areas are actually remnants of the attempted Nephilim invasion, which happened many thousands of years ago. Some of these genetic hybrids also had red hair, and thus were called red-haired giants, which was another confusion tactic of the invading races attempting to colonize and take over the planet by eliminating the authentic Celtic Grail King lineages. An incredible disinformation campaign has ensued for thousands of years to twist and pervert the real human histories portraying the red-haired Celtic Druid groups as bloodthirsty savages, cannibals, and oppressors. However, the authentic Celtic Grail genetic lines are directly connected to the Hyperborean timelines of the Aryan root race cycle, which holds an extraordinary amount of Elohim genetic memories showing who built certain features in the planetary grid network, including the stargates, and that these builder lineages are specifically connected to the mother of dragons lineages through ruby sun DNA. Thus, these particular Celtic Druid lineages are especially coveted for cloning experiments for their specific line of Diamond Sun DNA connected to the ancient builder races. Those that embodied as the first cause of Aquamarine Ray with its Holy Spirit Azothian waters are from the cosmic founder Mother lineages and are sought after by many of the invading alien groups who want to experiment on those genetic records in order to build and control an extensive planetary grid system here and on other planets. Hence, this is the main blueprint used for generating cloned hybrids and imposters used for hijacking the Celtic Druid root races, Aryan spiritual knowledge, accumulated from Hyperborea and beyond that is held directly in their DNA records. As a divide and conquer warring tactic, the negative alien agenda genetically engineered a group of red haired giants that appear physically similar to the Celtic Grail red hair lines. But these imposters were indeed a scourge against humanity, as antichrist abominations not created of this planet. These were subgroups of the Nephilim hybrids with red hair that were intentionally sent by disgruntled Anunnaki to attack the Elohim groups and help conquer the earth. These red-haired giants were engineered off-planet and sent here to destroy the grid protection abilities of the authentic and real Celtic Druid Magi Grail Kings defending the planet from invasion. With this warring confusion tactic, the human population would have a harder time determining the authentic Christos Celtic red-haired Grail Kings and their peaceful Law of One civilizations versus the genetically engineered warring version embodied by non-human invading forces that were terrorizing and cannibalizing the local populations at the behest of the negative alien agenda. The genocidal campaign made against the Celtic Magi Grail lines also began the imposter infiltration into the Knights Templar organization, in which the invading races of the negative alien agenda brought in the groundwork for Freemasonry secret societies to recreate the great work, to hide and rewrite human history for the negative alien agenda. The Knights Templar organizations were masquerading outwardly as humanitarian representatives 
in order to hijack genuine ascension sciences that were based in the original Celtic Grail Kings Nazarene records that they had stolen during the earlier Celtic diaspora, which were powerful initiations into the triple solar goddess mysteries. The point is to recognize that the Nazarene records are original Essene records of the Law of One from the Celtic Church that existed way before the timeline of Yeshua the Christ, and that his mission with his wife included manually recording the information again in handwritten manuscripts to attempt the preservation of this ancient knowledge for the masses. There is more than one Christ figure being represented in this planetary matrix, as well as several counterfeits appearing as holographic inserts and famous identity overlays. To evolve and become a free cosmic Christ citizen means that herogamic union, perfect energy balance, made from pure love between the inner male Christ and the inner female Christ is mandatory. That is the highest consciousness state of true ascension and spiritual freedom for each individual. Embodying perfect love is all. Secret societies hide depravity, fallen Anunnaki shapeshifters. Not unlike what is occurring now, 5,500 years ago, the negative alien invaders began systematically destroying the existing historical records, cultures, artifacts, and monuments of ancient builder structures in order to obliterate the existence of the angelic human past and the evidence of the Diamond Sun Solar Dragon bloodlines as the genesis of the original Celtic Grail Kings from Hyperborea, Tiamat, and Venus. This began a multiple species war, raging over genetic material and timelines, the attempted genocide of the authentic Maji Grail bloodlines, and insertions of genetic modification and alien hybridization, along with breeding programs with the intention to subvert the future evolutionary direction of the human species. These inversions and outright lies credit the Anunnaki as the supposed lines of the red-haired kings, proclaiming themselves as the earthly-based gods and rightful dragon kings with the right to divine rulership of earthly territory. These are falsified identities that are body-snatched human forms, which include the insertions of the highest Nephilim lines and other hybridized invaders. They are more accurately credited to be the lines of the abomination of red-haired giants that were purposely sent to terrorize and conquer angelic humanity through the introduction of blood drinking and satanic ritual abuse. The Anunnaki are hierarchical lunar AI hybrid entities that use rank to determine what level and type of body their extra-dimensional species are allowed to inhabit, which is based upon the discretion of their power elite overlords. They do not choose their body if they remain in the workforce of the hierarchical organization. It is chosen for them. Most of the Anunnaki species are also referred to as Anunnaki hybrid fallen angelics, and they live as shadow shapeshifters that inhabit doll-like bodies or biological drone bodies that are designed for their particular job in the hive mind collective of their civilization. Their job and tasks serve the collective hive mind to which they have been directly assigned based on their recorded history and memory retention from multiple lifetimes. To call a human-looking body snatched by an Anunnaki that refers to himself as royalty or king, such as those represented in Sumerian artifacts, 
is incorrect because this was not the body they were incarnated into. It is the body they performed an artificial genetic bond transfer into in a laboratory, which then requires consuming the essence of living human souls to maintain their lifespan. Only those considered royalty or king rulers at the top of their hierarchy are allowed to have a humanoid five-star body that is based upon the Diamond Sun DNA that they are able to reasonably recreate, which is a Frankenstein level of hybridizing the Ruby Sun DNA. For the shape-shifting lunar shadow body of the Anunnaki fallen angelic hybrid to inhabit the Ruby Sun DNA, which appears on the outer to be an angelic human body, they require blood drinking and cannibalism of human beings to consume the living essence in order to ensure their lifespan. Thus, through gradual stages of alien invasion, these non-human forces began to insert themselves as Babylonian kings, Egyptian pharaohs, future monarchs, and captains of industry, as these same bloodlines are highly venerated today in the pyramid of hierarchical control that has been weaponized against humanity by the power elite Archontic group. These groups, aided by the invaders, inserted themselves falsely as the declared rightful kings and rulers of contemporary times, believing themselves genetically elite in contrast to the majority of hybridized humans. Many in the power elite claim to be genetically connected to the Celtic Druid Grail lineages in which they pervert the knowledge to intentionally enslave and dehumanize the global population. Instead, they are from the lineage of the fallen Anunnaki invaders inhabiting human bodies and pretending to be the authentic royal bloodlines of the Maji Grail Kings from the Mother of Dragons. Thus, for eons, in order to maintain their power and control as the great impostors, they defiled the feminine Christo Sophia to hijack her immortality secrets through attempting to recreate and pervert the divine ether Azothian flows in satanic rituals. In the desperate quest to preserve physical health and longevity of life spans, they sought to cheat death and achieve immortality no matter how depraved the actions gathering Gnostic Essene knowledge and perverting it through the rewritten text and inverted Mother Goddess Sophia rituals carried out by the Luciferian Knights Templar. Consuming white powder of monatomic gold and adrenochrome harvest from the blood sacrifice of children were the Antichrist tools used to prop up their energy bodies for attempted immortality as they descended into deeper criminality, perversions, and psychopathy. In esoteric Luciferian Knights Templar tradition, blood sacrifice was justified as a stage of the great work for consciousness evolution in which the initiate must massacre the innocents in order to gain the energy mass from the harvested souls that would be necessary to become immortal and free of the earthly burdens of reincarnation. Upon this faulty and twisted theory introduced by Saturnian blood worship woven into the base 10 esoteric Kabbalah, the massacre of the innocents became a hidden mysterious principle encoded in the secret rituals of the developing power elite hierarchies. They formed a well-funded, organized corporate machine that ran the many levels of the secret society from the top of the pyramid with inner, outer, and intermediate compartmentalized groups. Those connected to every compartment learn a part of the knowledge, 
while no one actually knows who is running the top of the pyramid until they start to see evidence of carrying out pedophilic rituals and blood sacrifice. The higher initiates in the approved bloodlines are educated to understand the religious symbolisms being used in their actual meanings, while the common masses are made purposely ignorant to the symbolism which is hidden in plain sight. Thus, the Vatican wears pedophilic insignia openly, has defiled the Notre Dame cathedrals while the masses remain ignorant to the true meaning behind its child trafficking and blood sacrifice religion, which requires massacre of the innocents as a blessed sacrament for Antichrist forces. Sisters of Avalon in Gaul and Scotland During the Yeshua and Mary Sophia Iron Age Christos mission, they held the eighth dimensional hierogamic union and were able to produce children. Their female descendants were known to have retained the dragon queen bloodlines of Avalon, and their male descendants became known as the Fisher Kings in Gaul, which later became France. During the next stage of the Christos mission with the birth of King Arthur, his mother, was from this same dragon queen bloodline, the mother of dragons, which descended directly from Mary Sophia Magdalene. This was later formed into a high priestess order known as the Sisters of Avalon. The heritage of the Sisters of Avalon as the high priestess order of the mother of dragons, sourcing from Mary Sophia Magdalene, was highly guarded by the underground representatives of the authentic Celtic Church or Nazarene sex. Thus, they hid the ancestral history of the female bloodlines of Christ through oral traditions and in some written manuscripts and historical artifacts that spanned locations between France, Ireland, and Scotland. Some of these records were given to Cistercian monks, which found their way to Knights Templars, which inspired the massive efforts in building the Notre Dame cathedrals that are dedicated to Mary Magdalene as the Grail bloodline of the Solar Dragon Queen. Hence, the gorgeous Gothic cathedrals were built with advanced ancient builder Templar knowledge which included extensive geodetic, cymatic knowledge of the planetary ley lines. Thus, the cathedrals were intended to be the higher education and healing centers for the spiritual initiate of Magdalene Mystery Schools, which included the Sophianic knowledge of the great work of the individual ascension, in order to achieve spiritual sovereignty, known to be the highest divine purpose for all human beings. Before the Notre Dame cathedrals were ransacked by the Church of Rome upon the Roman conquest of Gaul, bustling Celtic civilizations sprouted up around the cathedrals. Prayer, fasting, reverence, a meditative study of sacred texts and imagery of the law of one philosophy as it was envisioned by the Celtic Church were an everyday life theme in the local communities. Nazarene pilgrims came to Gaul, which was primarily inhabited by Celtic and Aquitani tribes encompassing present-day France, Luxembourg, Belgium, and Switzerland. Thus, the Chartres Cathedral in France has an extensive history surrounding the hidden aspects of the Celtic Church and their Nazarene communities that came to take part in the initiation rituals hosted through Our Lady of Chartres, the Solar Dragon Queen Mary. Chartres Cathedral Ritual of Divine Ether through the evocation of the beloved 
Holy Mother Sophia in her solar female Christos Sophia emanation and by invoking her sacred Ankh mysteries, another section of her triple solar goddess body was unearthed from the decaying dead elemental bindings and risen through the element of sacred divine fire water through the consecrated cosmic ether ritual. Thus, Guardian Host facilitated the herogamic union of the triple solar god and triple solar goddess through sequential Christic divine ether rituals, which began at the Chartres Cathedral Labyrinth with the solar eclipse on December 4th. Chartres Cathedral acts as the unifying architecture for the seventh dimensional solar dragon wing of the solar dragon queen, Mother Mary of Dragons, and Roslyn Chapel acted as the sixth dimensional solar dragon wing of the thirteenth solar dragon king, or Solar Christ Michael of Dragons, in which they came together and unified as one cosmic rod and staff on the spine of Albion. This same configuration of Christos Sophia Trinity architecture with herogamic merged solar dragon wings was the foundation body from which the golden cities of Atlantis were originally built which exists in spiral no time and spans multiple dimensions from Earth, Tara, and Gaia. Earth, Tara, and Gaia also hold this trinity architecture that represents the planetary consciousness of the triple solar goddess united in the Albion light body. Thus, for grid workers, we have hit a major milestone in the field, in which many of us are currently exploring the Celtic goddess codes of the new Sophianic divine feminine body parts as they are unraveling into personal awareness. As these Christo seven dimensional female body parts are returned, there are some astral contents, black magic, booby traps, and imposter hologram fakery that are also exploding and disintegrating into residue of tiny dust particles. For some with the Celtic coating, this time will bring on an intense lunar transfiguration in the sacral areas, shooting up the spine in which the higher embodiment of the solar dragon wings from Chartres and Roslyn will appear to be holographically represented in the light body. In my experience, many of these solar female body parts were buried at the bottom of a poisoned chalice well in the basement of an original crystal cathedral being guarded by massively sized demonic creatures, multiple-headed principalities at the top of the satanic demonic hierarchies. Most of these demonic hierarchies lead back to the Vatican portal systems and appear to be directly conjured in satanic rituals of blood sacrifice, abusing the sacred waters and ascension teachings of the divine feminine and her Holy Spirit. While reclaiming these parts, there was a consciousness experience reliving the suffocation in the earth and the release and rising of the seventh dimensional portions of the triple solar goddess Violet Ray body parts in her newly assembled body form that were found at the bottom of the Chartres Cathedral in Chartres, France. Additionally, assorted holograms of the seven lamps that were being distorted in the organic crystal cathedral architecture from the artificial Armageddon software is being replaced right now throughout the dimensional landscapes. The Lady of the Lamps, Christo Sophia architecture, was buried underground in Chartres and other cathedrals and are being strictly guarded by the demonic creatures which must be evicted and delivered back to the Cosmic Mother 
as broken down consciousness units. Lady of the Lamps are the female principal layers that are directly connected to the Ursa Major or newly christened Golden Bear constellation functions of the universal race system, which are now being reflected in authentic hierogamic union of the aeonic pairings which act as the cosmic timekeepers from the Orion Galactic Core. The return of Christos mission representatives, Herogamic Union through corrections in the cosmic clock, have recently reunited Akhenaten and Kia, Hatshepsut and Ezekiel, family of consciousness streams from the Earth, Tara, Gaia histories connected to the original Kristala suns. Agnaughton and Kia seem to have embodied the Christic solar overriding forms for the Egyptian pantheon genetic tree used in AI cube systems and their red wave identity clones, and this acts as the repelling force of the red cube false identities of seventh dimensional inversions of Isis, Osiris, hierarchies that were bonded in the Saturn Moon Matrix. This inverted seventh dimensional based unholy union was generated from Saturn Moon blood worship rituals and was instrumental in powering up many of the Antichrist obelisk pillars used for marking cardinal directions in the artificial tree AI timelines and Thothian Leviathan anti-herogamic rod and staff, trident architecture, which are impaled across the globe in the ley lines. As always, our Christos mission continues, and until next month, we will continue to uncover the truth of our authentic spiritual home and origins, knowing that we are all in this together. May we join together in our closing prayer. Beloved God, blessed are those who hear the celestial choir of the angels sing in the presence of the most Holy Spirit of God, our Holy Divine Mother, which resides within and brings her presence into animation through our sacred crystal heart as we feel her divine presence. We dedicate and consecrate our lives to be guided and aligned to our Cosmic Holy Mother and all of her dedicated servants, those who have held and protected her secrets and have waited eons for this moment to witness her glorious resurrection. Beloved Holy Mother Sophia, I am your humble servant. May my body serve as your holy conduit in service to the highest expression as God intends. Our prayers to the Holy Divine Lady. May the Holy Divine Lady cast off her lunar robe and find her sacred crystal heart as the solar female Christos Sophia, the triple solar goddess resurrected from the sound from the heavenly house of God, and in the true nature as one with the house of God. May the eternal light of Christos Sophia return her sacred crystal rose heart wisdom and her sacred sounds to bless the earth. May the eternal light of Christos Sophia, sacred waters, return to bless the earth. Remove the blood of martyrs and saints, from the sacrifice made to the beast upon this earth, may the crystal waters of our Holy Mother Sophia cleanse the suffering of spilt blood upon the earth. Remove the martyrs and saints hanging from the rosy cross. Heal their spiritual wounds and restore their memory to be revealed to the true spirits of the Godhead, the eternal Christos. May the true God essence of unity be here, present, potent, and parental 
to perfect this sacred supper with God's true divine will for each of us. Our loving prayers for the earth. May the earth's Holy Mother find her body washed away from suffering and cleansed with the crystal waters of eternal life to be reborn anew may her kingdoms find the true nature as one with the house of God may the eternal body of the Christ Sophia return her heart wisdom and sacred sounds to bless and protect the earth Holy Mother Sophia claim that which is truly yours your body your mind your heart your womb your mysteries of mysteries may wisdom return to the heart of mother Sophia and renounce the beast of Baphomet from its masquerade in your name on this earth and throughout the many earthly kingdoms I am Christos Sophia and I have returned my mother's body to this world. I am Christos Sophia, and I have returned my mother's body to this world. I am Christos Sophia, and I have returned my mother's body to this world. May the holy blessings of God be with our crystal heart, mind, and spirit all aspects of our body consecrated and dedicated to the cosmic sovereign law of God's eternal love the reclamation of the order of Christos on earth may our brothers and sisters rejoice and celebrate in the eternal light of God to return the divine plan in perfect peace and love to this earth beloved family we thank you for this opportunity as we open to all processes required to align fully to the highest purpose to steward the divine plan as you focus upon your heart feeling the sacred inner marriage within send your gratitude to God send your gratitude to Christ Send your gratitude to Christ Sophia. It is with great joy and reverence I am home in the solar light of Christos and Christos Sophia. Peace be with your heart. Peace be with your mind. Peace be with your body. May all be with the unconditional love and perfect peace held in the eternal light of God and Christ until next stay in the luminosity of your avatar Christo Sophia heart path please be kind to yourself and to each other with a loving heart until next month